Okay. So 4.30. Okay, I'm ready. So are we continuing then with uh, number 3? Okay. Yes. So we have f of x, 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 4. Let's take a minute and work yeah. on this. We have to apply the quotient rule. Good. So let's apply the quotient rule one minute and then see what we get. How can you miss the review? You know, I mean, unless there is a problem. So I shouldn't say anything because you never know. Well, you, you do know. Never know. No, it, it will be exactly the same. So yes, don't forget about the quotient rule. Very important. we have an answer or not yet? Okay, so the top prime is 3, 2x plus 4 minus 3x minus 1 times 2 over 2x plus 4 squared. Yeah. If somebody simplifies this, it's a huge error, right? We don't do that. Yeah. So 2x plus 4 squared, then we have 6x plus 12 minus 6x plus 2. These two go away. Final answer, this. Is this okay? Yeah. Good, moving on. f of x, the square root of x squared plus 4x minus 3. Let me give you a hint on this one. So every time we differentiate a function, which is the square root of the function, we have 1 over 2, the square root of the function, times the function prime. Please remember this. So obviously it's going to be very simple, but you have to apply this because it's f to one half. You bring one half in front, you subtract one from one half, which is going to be f to negative one half times the function one. And this is f of this. This is f. Okay. Yes. So let me know when you're ready. So it will be 1 over? 1 over 2 square root x squared plus 4x minus 3 times 2x plus 4. That's it. Yes, I will pull out a 2 and simplify with this 2. Let's do that. No, that's OK. We'll do it now. Simplify this 2 with this 2. So it's x plus 2 over the square root. Is this clear? Thank you. 
Exactly. It's already in front. Yeah. Moving on to the next. Very good. I'm just going to copy the next one and I'll wait. Ready? Yeah. Yes. Is that clear? Yes? Are we working on this one for a minute? Okay. No? If the function raised to the fourth power, fourth power four from the function to the third, from the inner function to the Okay, so four ln x minus three to the third. Everything, right? To the third times. times when I differentiate natural log. One over x minus three. N times x minus three prime. Just one? Exactly. That's it. Okay. Done. You don't have to do anything else. Good. We can wait for another minute. No, it's okay. With this one, do we need to differentiate the tangent? We'll have the first one first, so it's 45x squared. I will never touch 15. 15 oh. will have to wait. Okay. Well, only because it's more convenient. Then involved and get huge numbers. So that it would be 3x squared. Good. Times, times e to the 4x squared. Plus, it would be x to the third times e to the 4x squared times 8x. That's it. Of course, I will pull out x squared and e to, x, to 4x squared. 
x squared is a common factor, e to 4x squared is another common factor. What is left? x squared is out, e is out, there is only 3 left. Plus, this is out, x squared is out, out, right, but there is an x with another x. So this will be 8x squared, and this is it. Is this okay? No. No. So we we don't want a graph. Okay. This is not a graphing situation. Find the absolute max min values of the function on the interval. You must show why they are max absolute max min. You must show the sign of the first derivative on the given interval. We are not graphing. Okay. We're just doing our chart, right? Correct. Just for the first derivative and the function, nothing else. Do we need more time? Mm, yes. And also, can I borrow your calculator? Yes. I give extra 5% extra credit if you complete a student opinion forms and you just show me that you did complete them. Uh, just the last page, it says completed, nothing else. Just take a picture with your phone and just show it to me. Ready for the first derivative, which is? Uh, 
Yeah, 8x cubed plus 1. Very good. So we set that equal to zero. Very good. And we get we get the x cubed equals negative one over eight. And x equals negative one over two. Excellent. That's all I needed. So then on the table, we have f prime and we have f of x. We only can put negative one to one, nothing else. We have negative one half and zero. We have to determine this value, which is f of negative one half. Um, to me, it came out to be negative 3 over 8. Um, uh, it's very possible. So this would be um, uh, 1 over 16. So indeed, 1 over 8 minus 1 over 2. So negative 3 over 8 indeed. What is the value for negative 1? For negative 1, I have 1. For positive 1, I have 3. Agreed? We have to determine the endpoints. Yes. yes? OK, so then I plug in in the derivative. I plug in negative 1, and I get a negative. I plug in 1, and I get positive. And now I have to make sure that this row works well with this. From 1 to negative 3 over 8, is the function increasing or decreasing? decreasing. Correct. Is that supported by the sign of the first derivative? Good. From negative 3 over 8 to 3. Increasing. increasing. Is that supported by the sign of the first derivative? Yes. Good. So now I have to identify negative 1, 1, negative 1 half, negative 3 eighths, and 1 comma 3. What do we know for sure about this one? That's uh, min. Yes, because that's the sequence, right, min. So it's an absolute and local min. What about negative 1, 1? And by the, what about 1, 3? Um, negative 3 over 8. There is no relative at the endpoints of the interval ever. So it's just a local. It cannot be relative or local. At the endpoints of the interval, never. So this is nothing. And what about 1, 3? Hey. It's 1, 3. So there is a height of 1, there is a height of negative 3 over 8, and there is a height of 3. Ah, so it's Absolute max. It cannot be local or relative. So the height of 1 is here. The height of negative 3, 8 is negative. So this is absolute and local. And the height of 3 is up here, which is an absolute max. Thank you so much for helping me on Saturday, Eddie. Oh, yeah, thank you for getting me out of my house. Oh, good. Okay, so negative 1, 1 is nothing. This is an absolute and local min, and this is the absolute max. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, very good. Moving on to number 5. So we have f of x equals 3x plus 6 over x minus 4. For this problem, we want everything. We want a graph. We want absolutely everything. So we're starting with the main. Uh, yes. It's from negative infinity to 4, from 4 to infinity. Excellent. Union to 4 to infinity. Correct. But if you put everything in the chart, in the table, then you don't have to specify it on the side. Oh, no? Nope, because oh. I know that you know what you're doing oh. if you put everything in the table.
So please summarize all the information in the table. So you're, that will really help you. Disregard it, it's my phone. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn it off. So remember to find everything about the function before you move on to the first derivative. Everything that you can possibly determine. Limits, end behavior, x and y intercepts, everything. And then move on to the first derivative. I think we should do this one in pieces. So let's exhaust the function together when you're done. And then move on to the first derivative. And then move on to the second derivative. What do you think? OK, good. So let's exhaust first the, um, the function. Right away, there's an absolute right Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. I don't remember vertical versus horizontal asymptote. Mm -hmm. Horizontal asymptote is an end behavior. Okay. Horizontal is an end behavior. Negative infinity and positive infinity. So we cannot confuse them, right? The vertical asymptote is around the number, left and right. Very good. Good. Yes. Um, yes. We also set the numerator equal to zero, right? Yes, to find the x in the sign. Yes, which is negative two. Correct. Correct. So negative two is zero. When x is 0, we have negative 3 halves. Um, at 4, everything is undefined. It do, does not disappear, so x equals 4 is a VA. So now, the only thing I need is this. This limit, this limit, this limit, and this limit. Add negative infinity is positive. Add negative infinity. Because it's uh, it, it would be negative over negative. So, we're so hold on. Limit 3x plus 6 over x minus 4 when x approaches negative infinity, correct? Right. Okay. So what is the degree at the top? One. The degree of the top is oh. 1. So let's factor it out. What is the degree at the bottom? One. So let's factor it out. What is left? 3 plus 6. Six over, x. Three plus six over x. Good. Because x times 3 mm -hmm. is this, and x times this is that. Correct. And then? There's 1 minus 4 over x. Good. I simplify. Where does this go? 0. Perfect. Where does this go? 0. Yeah. So where does this go? 0. 1. Don't guess. Look at Positive it. Positive infinity sentence. Look at it. Exactly. The top goes to 3, the bottom goes to 1. 
which we actually knew. This is a uh, rational function type 1, same degree over same degree, leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. That's the horizontal asymptote, right? So 3 and 3. So y equals 3, horizontal asymptote. Leading coefficient over leading coefficient. Now let's determine the limits left and right of 4. So I need to find limit. xx approaches 4 from the left, from 3x plus 6 over x minus 4, and limit sx approaches 4 from the right from 3x plus 6 over x minus 4. I know the answer. There is no doubt in my mind. It's a vertical asymptote. But what I don't know is the sign. 4 from the left means 3.9. Positive power. But what about the denominator? Negative. So then the sign is perfect. So now 4 from the right, 4.1. The top is still positive. But the denominator would be, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to put a negative over there. OK. So then I know from the left is negative infinity. From the right is positive infinity. I exhausted the function. I'm done. There is nothing else I can find about the function from the function itself. And now we're ready to study the derivative. Could you go back up for a second? Can we get to the limits when x approaches 4 from left and 4 from right? So when you replace this 4 from the left, we're putting in like 3.9? Yes. OK. Top is positive, bottom is negative. The answer is negative. 4 from the right? And then 4 from the right. Perfect. Because you can, you know the denominator is, on, is 0, so the function is undefined. You cannot plug in 4. Right. So you have to put, just determine the sign, so you plug in a number close to 4, left and right. Gotcha. So now let's sign the derivative. Do we have the first derivative? Yeah. Very possible. So the top is 3, x minus 4 minus 3x plus 6 over x minus 4 squared. So 3x minus 12 minus 3x. Minus 6. Minus 6. Minus 18. Divided by x minus 4 squared. So negative 18 over x minus 4 squared. Good. So I need now what? Well, the behavior at the, the, at critical, the critical numbers. Critical numbers. So either when the function is undefined, but this function is undefined at 4, but so is the function. So that's not a critical number. Mm -hmm. Or when f prime is 0. What do I get when f prime is 0? Any solutions? Mm -hmm. No, because the numerator cannot be 0. Awesome. What is the sign of this entire expression? Always negative, because this piece is positive, this piece is positive, so it's always less than 0. 
That's all I need to show. Now remember, this is the moment of truth, right here, right now. If these two rows don't work well together, then I say, oops, there is a mistake somewhere. Ready? From 3 to 0, what does the function do? Is that supported by the sign of the first derivative? Mm -hmm. From 0 to negative 3 halves. Supported by the sign of the derivative? OK. From negative 3 halves to negative infinity. From positive infinity to 3. OK. So now let's see what happens with the second derivative. So of course, I will look at the function as negative 18 x minus 4 to negative 2. This is the easiest expression to differentiate. So I'm hoping you're going to change it. Let me know when you have the second derivative. So 36 and x minus 4 to the th negative 3 and times the inner function prime, which is 1. So this is 36 over x minus 4 to the third. Do not draw conclusions here about the sign. It's never 0, obviously. But please separate it like this. So you don't have to plug in in this piece, because this is always positive. It's not supposed to be 2x. x times 1 x minus 4? I'm sorry. I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> I just came up with some numbers. Sorry about that. Of course, x minus 4 to the third. So when I go back, it's never 0. When I go back to the table, when I plug in a number to the left of, zero, of 4, what do I get? Yes, that's the sign. Very good. When I plug in a number, of course, only in this piece. I don't care for the rest. Um, a number to the right of 4, what do I get? Good. That's all I need. And now we are ready to graph. When I graph a function with asymptotes, I have to graph the asymptotes first. So right here, y equals 3, horizontal asymptotes, so we don't forget. So the vertical asymptote is at 4. And the horizontal asymptote is at 3. And now we're ready. I plot negative 2, 0. I plot 0, negative 3 halves. And the function says it's decreasing, opening down from 3, crossing at negative 2, 0, crossing at 0, negative 3 halves, and going to negative infinity. So that's what it is. Opening down. Is this clear? On the right-hand side, it's opening up, still in decreasing from infinity down to 3. So this is the graph of f of x equals 3x plus 6 over x minus 4. Is this clear? Mm -hmm. So from 3, decreases to negative 2, 0, decreases to 0, negative 3 halves, and goes to negative infinity. On the other side of the vertical asymptote, opening up, decreasing from infinity to 3. Everyone? Say yes. Yes, everyone? OK. Um, so then we're moving on to your favorite, implicit differentiation. So x to the fourth minus x squared y cubed equals 12. And we're asked to find the slope of the tangent line at negative 2 comma 1.
Are we working on a minute for a minute on this? Okay. Do we need more time? Ready? Okay, very good. So we differentiate the left hand side, we differentiate the right hand side, and we have 4x to the third minus, very good, times y cubed plus x squared times 3 times y squared times dy over dx equals 0. Product rule. Function 1, function 2. Clear? So then 4x cubed minus 2xy cubed minus 3x squared y squared dy over dx is 0. This is the only one that has the variable, so I'm going to move it to the other side. 4x cubed minus 2xy cubed equals 3x squared y squared dy over dx. And finally, dy over dx equals 4x cubed minus 2xy to the third over 3x squared y squared. Yes, you could factor out an x from the top and simplify with 1x from the bottom. That's fine. We are asked to evaluate this when x is negative 2 and y is 1. So let's plug it in. 4 times negative 8, negative 32. Um, 4 times 1, so plus 4, over 4 and 1, 12. Correct me if I'm wrong. What's in here? What's this? Look at this. Yeah. What was my cheat sheet? It's the test that we went over. And then I showed you how I wanted to create it. Oh, yes. Check, check, check. That's, that's how I want to grade. So then this is negative. 28 divided by 12, I'll simplify by 4, negative 7 divided by 3. I'm checking my calculations. Yeah. Negative 32, neg so this is positive 4, this is 1, negative 28, and 3 times 4 is 12. Did we get the same thing? Where does this negative Um, 
Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Chloe? Yeah, I'm just trying to see I'm missing a three somewhere on my calendar. You mean this three? Yes. I just have you have when you differentiate y cubed, you have to have three times y squared times dy over dx. Yeah, I have three y squared, but I don't have three x. I just have it here. Yeah, I'm missing. You don't have the x squared. I don't, I don't have the three. It's from the bottom step from the, when it's in the denominator. It's because you divide it to get dy over dx by yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. I have to move this term to the other side and divide by this. Yeah, I have it done that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. I should do it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Do we get negative seven thirds? Yes. Okay, perfect. Moving on. We're well, given the revenue 0 0.007x cubed minus 0.5x squared plus 150x. And they are currently selling x equals 26. What is the current mo monthly revenue? How much would the revenue increase if sales increased from 26 to 28? 